I'm right, gonna make this quick. <laughs> hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Life. Welcome to another edition of Tool Time Tuesday. All right, real quick one for you this week. This is a tool that I use a lot, and for some reason, it's just never dawned on me to do a Tool Time Tuesday about it. I was asked about it on Instagram a couple weeks ago, and I thought, you know what, I should just share what this is and uh, how I use it. A lot of you probably recognize this already. It's not that rare of a tool. This is a gauge, uh, thickness gauge measurement for sheet metal. And uh, this one here in particular is the General Number 21. Starrett makes a version. This one here is 28 bucks. I was actually surprised how expensive this was. Uh, but then when you think about it, I mean, these are fairly accurate little uh, little spaces. It's not like they're stamped out. They're actually ground in. You can see the grind line. So uh, I guess it would cost a little bit to manufacture this, but a super handy little tool. Now, if you don't know what these are for, these are to be able to very quickly reference the thickness of sheet metal. Obviously, sheet metal comes in gauge size, and this is talking about the standard US gauge size uh, nomen the designation. If you're looking for something metric, this isn't going to help you, but I'm sure they do have something uh, of this equivalent, um, but I just don't have it here. That's one comment I get a lot on this channel. People are always like, well, why are you, why are you talking about your heat treat in Fahrenheit? I need the Celsius, please. But the truth is that here in Canada, we still use the imperial system a lot. I mean, obviously our speed limits are in kilometers per hour, distance is kilometers. Typically the weather is given in, in Celsius, but for a lot of industrial type things, if you know, you're getting heat treat stuff, if you're doing work, say talking about welding, uh, we often use the Fahrenheit still for temperatures and then in measurement it's still very, very <laughs> air compressor. <laughs> Did I look scared there? <laughs> I, I want to go back and see what my face did because that kind of scared me. <laughs> Anyways, yes, typically we still use Fahrenheit and then in measurements, it's still very much the thousandths of an inch. Like, I, I don't know if I've seen very many drawings. They'll give you a drawing and be like, okay, we need, you know, 17.63 millimeters or something like that. It, it just, we still use the imperial system a lot. So that's why I don't, I don't feature the metric system a lot on this channel because quite frankly, I just don't work with it. But anyways, so that's kind of the idea behind this. You know, with your gauge thicknesses of steel, you've got your thick to thin. Your smaller number is thicker material. The higher the number, the thinner the material. Oh, it drives me nuts. So we've got zero here, which is a nice big thick piece of sheet metal. And this will measure down to 30 gauge. No, this will go to 36 gauge, which is the equivalent of uh, seven thousandths of an inch. And uh, just to put that into a bit of perspective, the average human hair is about three thousandths of an inch thick. Mine is a little bit thinner. But in general, they say the average human hair is about three thousandths of an inch thick. So we're talking about a piece of steel that is the equivalent to just a bit bigger than two human hairs. So that's that's pretty fine. You can do some very fine measuring with this. The reason these are so important is because when you're doing sheet metal work, you can't just kind of guess, ah, it's either a 10 or 12 gauge, we'll go with one or the other. Uh, when you're setting up your shears, you need to know the thickness so you can have your offset for your blades. When you're going to break the sheet metal, you need to know your thickness because that affects your radius that you're breaking it at. And so it's quite important that these things in sheet metal shops, they'll have these things kicking around everywhere because you need to just check, hey, boom, 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 and know exactly what you're dealing with. And these do a great job for that purpose. Now, they also do a great job to give a quick indication of edge thickness when you're grinding your knives. One question I get asked a lot is, what thickness will you bring a knife to before heat treat or before sharpening? And it kind of depends. It depends on what the knife is going to be used for. Uh, is it going to be, uh, you know, chopping? Then I'd obviously want to leave that edge thickness a little thicker and kind of have a little bit more of a secondary bevel on there. Uh, uh, if it's a kitchen knife, you want to get that thing really thin. And then also, how much grinding am I going to do pre-heat treat or post-heat treat? So uh, I like to have these things laying around because on the one side, we've got the gauge thickness, but on the other side of that, we've got thousandths of an inch. And it's really handy to just leave these things over by the grinder, and as I'm grinding along, I can just kind of use this and reference, say, oh, okay, I'm about 25 thou, I'd like to take a little bit more off before we heat treat or whatever. Now, a lot of people are like, why won't you just use digital calipers? And that, that works just as fine. Having used both of them, though, this is actually a little bit more convenient to hold uh, than the calipers. Just, just, I find it quite comfortable to work with. The other thing with the calipers is, 
typically the tips on those are hardened steel. You can use them for marking. And if you're not careful, if you're kind of coming into your measurements, first of all, you gotta kind of find your measurement. You gotta tweak and adjust it, and are you holding it right or not? Uh, but if you're not careful when you're running along here, you can easily scratch that blade. And that's kind of heartbreaking. It just makes more work for you, either hand sanding or more time on the grinder. So I like to use this to check for my edge thickness as opposed to digital calipers. Uh, nice thing with this, you can just kind of grab it in your hand, figure out roughly where you want to be, and you can move along and check the entire thing like this, and it's just so easy and convenient. And then there's a the whole aspect that I'd rather have one of these getting grinding dust and water, you know, from sitting around my grinder. Uh, this isn't going to get damaged as much as digital calipers or something. I always consider digital calipers a tool. It's like, okay, you, you don't want to get it wet. You don't want to get dust on it. Um, in theory, this thing could get all the grinding dust in the world on it. It could get wet as long as you dry it and it doesn't start rusting. And it's really not going to lose any accuracy. Whereas if you're, you got your calipers or something, I mean, it's just, it's just not good. So as far as more a tool that I don't mind abusing as much, it's definitely this. And I far prefer this over my digital calipers. So I'll bring it in real quickly and we'll just kind of take a quick look at this and uh, show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so here's a close-up of these things. This is, again, the general number 21. Uh, this is $28, which kind of surprised me. But then again, I guess if it's supposed to be a fairly accurate measuring tool, it's not like this whole thing is just stamped. Uh, these are actually ground in there, so they should be quite precise. You can buy the Sterrett equivalent, and that's about $90 Canadian. So again, here on this one side, we've got these sheet metal designations from zero all the way to... 36 is actually in between these ones. And then on the back side here, we've got the uh, thousandths of an inch reference. So this here is a quarter inch right there. What size is a quarter inch? It's number three gauge. So you could order a, uh, a piece of quarter inch plate and just say I need a number three plate, number three gauge plate, or you could just say quarter inch, but they think you're cool if you use that one. And uh, yeah, so when I'm using this with my knives, we kind of hold this up here. And we can kind of run her down to wherever you think you're going to be. Now, if we look at the fit there, I think we're a little too too big there. So we're more than we're thinner than 15 thou, 14 thou, 12 and a half thou. We're still going on there fairly well. So now we can get down and into. So this is like 109 ten thousandths of an inch, about 11 thou, and we're just barely sneaking onto there. And this right here would be. We're about exactly 10 thousandths of an inch there. And again, the nice thing is that you can actually run this along your blade and kind of see exactly what your thickness maintains out at. And we're still, you know, right there, we're still catching, just barely catching. We're a little thicker. If we come up to this 12 and a half thou, now we're definitely fully on there with 12 and a half thou. So we're a little bit thicker, like 2 thousandths of an inch thicker there. If we come down here, we're well seated well seated in there and then again we can actually seat uh, 11 thou there and we can seat uh, 10 thou. So it's kind of just a really quick little way to gauge your edge thickness when you're grinding and uh, man I really really like these tools. This is something that I've had in my toolbox for years and years and it's probably only the last several months I pulled it out and started using it for grinding my bevels, uh, getting my edge thickness in and it works really really well. All right, guys, well, that wraps up this edition of Tool Time Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. And as always, I thank you so much for watching. Cheers.